Newport Jazz Nighting, starring the Count Basie Orchestra, George Benson, the Zawinul Syndicate, Elvin Jones Jazz Machine, Tito Puente and his orchestra, Celia Cruz. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Count Basie Orchestra under the direction of Frank Foster. Now the Zawinul Syndicate.
I spent the first 26 years of my life in Vienna. And uh, it was a great music town, you know, a lot of uh, influences from other sides also, not just folk music, Mozart, etc., Beethoven, all the Haydn stuff, you know. I've been very lucky over the years. I had wonderful musicians, you know, found Jaco Pastorius and guys like that. Yeah. Yeah. We are nuts. Hey. All the jazz musicians yeah. are nuts. We even become jazz musicians. It's like boxers, you know? The, the, Success, for, it's very rare that somebody is very, very successful. And, and I've been there, and I will be there again. And I think it's because of the quality of music. In my country, my little island, every year we have a little party. Yeah, it's where we dance and dance and dance and dance. You see, do you know what a carnivalito is?
Newport Jazz over the past years has presented many great musical artists. The king of the blues himself, Mr. B.B. King. The late great blues guitar giant who always struck a chord in our souls, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Composer, arranger, band leader, and baritone saxophonist, Jerry Mulligan. The talented saxophone wizardry of Grover Washington, Jr. Powerful, eclectic, and beautiful songstress Diane Reeves. How faint the tune, somewhere there's heaven, how high the moon, there is no moon above, and love is far away too, until it comes true that you love me. And now a shining star for the 90s, George Benson with the Count Basie Orchestra. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
Well, you know, my favorite is and probably always will be Nat Cole. He was the man whose voice I heard as a youngster, and I'm still trying to find somebody to top it, but uh, no one has. You know, I'm always looking for something that's important. Uh, we played and done a lot of things in our life, but at this stage, I think that I should not waste, you know, time uh, trying to prove anything, but to play significant things. I'm, I'm looking for great songs, great uh, um, situations, such as the album with McCoy Tyner, which I think is one of my favorite now that I've ever done. Uh, the Basie album that's coming up is a pet project of mine to turn out to be fantastic. So I, I'm really happy about what's going on and I hope that I can continue this tradition. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, the Elvin Jones Jazz Machine. about uh, 12, 12 years old, and I played a, a solo, a drum solo, with my brother Hank. He was playing, accompanying me on the piano in, our, in a church recital in our, our church in Pontiac, Michigan. The years that I was uh, with uh, John Coltrane, uh, yeah. It's something that's very special. It gave us an opportunity to, to play our music the way we felt about it, the way our uh, was moved spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, uh, in, that, in, that, in that fashion.
jazz and Afro-Cuban music began their long courtship in the 30s when a young and talented generation of Latin musicians from Cuba arrived in the United States. The first to gain mass popularity was Xavier Cugat, the king of rumba. Mario Bautza wed the big band jazz sound to Afro-Cuban music as the musical director and arranger for the famed Machito Orchestra. Bauza introduced percussionist Chano Pozo to Dizzy Gillespie. The result was the 1947 recording of Manteca, one of the greatest anthems of Latin jazz. The 1950s were the golden age of Latin music. While bebop was raging at Birdland on 52nd Street, Latin music was exploding on 53rd Street at the Palladium. Frequently, famous jazz musicians such as Charlie Parker, Hal Jader, and George Shearing would go down the block to jam with the big names of Afro-Cuban music, such as Machito, Tito Rodriguez, Arsenio Rodriguez, and the incomparable Tito Puente. In the 1960s, Tito Puente teamed up with the dynamic Cuban singer Celia Cruz, who would become known as the Queen of Salsa. In a successful live performance career and on over 100 records, Tito Puente's complete mastery of the timbales have won him the title of the king of Latin music. Now this monarch star shines not only on the international music scene, but along with Celia Cruz's star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Here is Tito Puente and his orchestra.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the great Celia Cruz. in Spanish Harlem, 10th Street, 5th Avenue, playing uh, with some of the local bands there. <laughs> like Machito and Nora Morales, or Jose Cubello, Pupi Capo. That's where I gained my experience, mostly. Well, the term Latin jazz is uh, taking the jazz melodies, uh, the, the conception of their harmonic uh, ex uh, changes, which are very modern, and giving them the, the Latin uh, rhythms or the roots of uh, percussive rhythm in combination with, uh, with the jazz, which would be a marriage. So I'm trying to get it like Dizzy does. I've done many jazz festivals throughout the world, and I've taken Celia with me to uh, Japan and all over Europe. We did a month in Europe now, mostly uh, jazz festivals, and we give the jazz festivals what you call a Latin tinge, and uh, people seem to enjoy it.
Count Basie Orchestra has included such jazz greats as Lester Young and Joe Jones, and was joined over the years by such renowned vocal stars as Joe Williams and Frank Sinatra. The band's most long-standing star, of course, was its founder and leader, William Count Basie. He and the orchestra played a very special role in jazz. While Duke Ellington could be considered jazz's Picasso, extending all of the music's elements with consummate virtuosity, Count Basie was more like jazz's Matisse. With the aid of such greats as Buck Clayton and Harry Sweets Edison, Basie distilled and refined the music's basics, swing and the blues, to an unsurpassed degree of intensity and simple elegance. Under the masterful leadership of Frank Foster since 1987, the band continues to swing as no other in jazz. Once again, the Count Basie Orchestra under the direction of Frank Foster. Frank Foster.